Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial today, we're going to have a look at creating a graphic equalizer. And let's first have a look at what we'll be creating. So yeah, you get the gist of it. A graphic equalizer, five band equalizer, each bar representing basically a part of the frequency spectrum. So low to high and then some text and um, it rotates around as you probably have seen. And another interesting bit here is of course the uh, ambient occlusion that makes it look all a lot more, well, a lot better in my view. All right, so um, let's first have a look at the finished composition. But before we do that, uh, there's one thing you need to do to be able to follow this tutorial. And that thing is, and you won't regret it, is head over to the Stake Underwater forum and then uh, look for this uh, Suck Less Audio File modifier. It's a, a very catchy title for a Fuse. A uh, Fuse is like a type of plugin for, well, it's not quite a plugin, but for all intents and purposes, it's a sort of a plugin for uh, Fusion. And it's a free uh, Fuse. And once you download this and you need to install that in a particular directory, you need to look up that directory on your own computer, but it's something in your sort of my documents or your sort of your application data sort of folder, you know, find the black magic design folder and then fusion and then fuses. Uh, but don't look in the uh, program or folder, right? That, that's not the right one that should be in your own application data. Um, but you know, uh, there are some pointers uh, via Google. It's it's fairly straightforward. So install it, and then all of a sudden you've got yourself uh, great capabilities in terms of uh, dealing with audio in Fusion. So do that first, then come back. Um, right. So high level, uh, we start with a uh, background tool, which is a 100 by uh, 800 uh, background here, and I just apply a simple gradient gradient going from green to red. Uh, then I feed that as a material into uh, a 3D shape and I do that five times, right? So one for each bar. So you can see that uh, here, right? This is one of them. And then to correct the mapping of the gradient to the uh, individual shape, I apply, apply a UV map to each. Then I merge it all together. Oh, and of course I uh, missed the essential part. Um, for each shape, I will uh, have the uh, audio plugin, the one I showed, the Fuse, um, uh, inserted was sort of enabled as a modifier. So the Y scale of the shape 3D, which is essentially a cube, is being modified by the amplitude of the audio. So let me show that to you. Uh, so here, this as well, let's take this particular one, right? The one on the left. Um, so if we go to the 3D tab and head down to the Y scale, right? So I basically untick the lock so that you can vary the scale for each, um, for each axis. And the Y scale is being modified basically by modified with audio, right? And once you've enabled that, you can head over to the modifier tab and then you can set the parameters. But essentially there I read a particular audio file and that audio file, the data thereof will vary the Y scale over time, right? Basically the amplitude of the audio will uh, change the Y scale of the cube, making it go up and down. Uh, now this is an important thing, right? Uh, the fuse itself does not have the ability to separate out frequencies. So how do we do this then, right? So we've got one for the low uh, frequencies here, high frequencies, the middle frequencies and such. How do we split it out? Well, uh, unfortunately, that's a bit of a manual process. Uh, what I do is I use a program called Reaper, but you can use any program. If you're on an Apple, you could use Logic or whatever. Uh, there's lots of open source programs out there as well, but the essence is uh, that you take a song, or in my particular case, it was a, a little loop I put together. I recorded a few things and then uh, I save it or I render it out five times. Uh, and each time I render it out for a different frequency spectrum. I do that in this particular program, Reaper, by enabling a, an EQ 
on the uh, master output, right? And so if you head over there, here, once I enabled it, you can see if I play it now, uh, it's only high frequencies, but if I put it really low, and this is a band pa pass, right? If you put it really low, right, you only have the low frequencies, etc. So I essentially varied this parameter and saved it out five times. And then I saved that one more time without the EQ enabled. That's basically the full song. But of course you can do this with any song, any MP3 you may have or whatever. Uh, just be sure actually that the output of your render uh, in, 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 your, uh, in your DAW is a WAV file, a 16-bit WAV file, because the, um, the Fuse itself cannot read uh, MP3s or uh, any other type of format. So it needs to be a 16-bit PCM WAV file, right? So be mindful of that. Uh, but once you've done that, so let's head back to Fusion, uh, you can then allocate this file to each of the shapes. So, oh, sorry, each shape will be allocated a different file. So in this particular case, this one has got the beat L, means the low frequencies. Uh, but we'll go through it, of course, when we will create our composition or recreate our composition. So that will take care of the height of the, uh, of the cube. Then I set the UV mapping to fix the uh, material. Then you merge it all together and then put it into a, or pipe it into another merge node. Then we'll e add uh, the floor to it. All right, then you get something like this. And also the text, as you can see here, uh, the camera and a, a couple of lights. Then we feed it into a renderer. And then the important bit is that we then uh, have two paths. One is straight out from the renderer in, into channel boolean. The other one, before it heads into the channel boolean, will go to an ambient occlusion node. All right, so the this is the result of the normal renderer. And this is the result of the ambient occlusion. When you combine the two, you get this. All right, so you see here a real difference, uh, which, well, of course, looks a lot better. Uh, this is not necessarily the, the best way to do ambient occlusion or the proper way to do it, but it gives you a very quick result. Uh, then finally, uh, we add a background node uh, and then we're done. Basically, we save it out. All right, so uh, let's recreate this. So, oops, not Control-B, Control-N for a new composition. So let's start with the background tool. Uh, show that there and create a 100 by 800 type image like so. And ensure that the color is set to a gradient. And before we change the colors, let's change the direction first. So let's put this one at the bottom and this one at the top. All right. uh, then we change black to a type of green, not quite that that luminous but let's do this the end one will change to red again a bit darker maybe this and then we'll pop one in the middle here just by clicking here and choose an amber type color like so and then we've got ourselves a little nice gradient that we can use for our bars so let's put this to the side and let's create our first shape all right, and let's display that in viewport too. Switch the light on, change it into a cube. All right, zoom out a bit. And uh, let's go over to the 3D tab. And as said before, we'll unlock the X, Y, Z or Z. Um, and then look at what happens here. So when we increase the scale, this happens. Now, this is a bit different to what we want to have. Right, we want the bar to just have a stationary point at the bottom and then it's going up and down. Not like this. You can use it like this as well, of course, but that's not what we want right now. So how do we change that? Well, very simple. We'll change the pivot point. 
So as you can see here, we've moved to the left, pivot point moves to the bottom. So the exact bottom point will be minus a half. Right. So uh, that's that done. Um, I want this to be level with the ground plane as well. So there's one other thing I want to, want to do is uh, the offset uh, needs to be a half. Oops, half. And there we go. Sorry, there was a bit of a delay in uh, the screen refreshing. Next thing we want to do is um, alter the Y skill with the uh, modifier. But before we do that, um, once you're happy with this, let's first copy it over, right, a few times for the other ones. So copy, uh, paste, 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 and paste. And let's pop these here. Right, something like this. Okay. Um, so let's look at the first one. And I said we want to vary the Y scale by uh, adding the modifier. Right. So here, once you've got that uh, plugin installed or the fuse installed, you will have this option here to modify with audio. So let's select this. And let's head over to the modifier tab. And now you can see here the modifier. First thing we need to do, right, is select the wave file. So let's uh, go to the right folder and ensure that the file type is set to all files. And there I'm going to choose the one I chose for the low frequencies, with, which is beat L. All right, so if we now play, see something happening you know something is changing uh i don't want to have this max i want to set it to unsigned average and if we play it again right it's starting to behave like what we want to see uh of course it needs to go higher so let's change the scale let's scale it up to maybe 12 or maybe 15 don't know. yeah something like this uh, and this looks like what we want to have. Let's do this for the other ones as well, and I'll speed it up a bit. All right, so that's all done. Uh, next thing we want to do is line them all up properly. So um, let's first create a merge tool and a merge 3D tool and feed them all into that. One, two, three. Oh. And there we go. So right now you only see one, of course, because they're all in the exact same position. So let's uh, change to the top perspective here, zoom out a bit. And uh, so the first one here is at um, this X position. And let's have a look at the second one. And let's see if we can offset it maybe by one and a half. And of course, um, yeah, there we go. Um, second one will make three and four and a half so as you can see they're all one and a half apart and then six right, there we go and now actually want to move the whole merge maybe you're right to the middle middle here something like this so that's probably oh, three Okay, um, so that's that. And now let's have a look um, at the perspective and let's see what we've got. All right, this is already looking pretty good. So next one up. 
And by the way, if you think, well, this one is not going very high, right? For instance, the high frequencies, you can either alter the original file, but what you can also do is basically for that particular one that's not going very high, just go to the modifier and scale it up, right? So maybe make this 25 or 30. Oops. And when we play then, it's already going higher, right? Um, you know, whatever works well, right, visually, just do that. Uh, next thing we want to do is feed the background in. And then we will immediately see the issue we've got as well. Right, so when we play this, right, uh, it's basically stretching out the texture or the material right but that needs to be stationary so say the red all needs to be here orange here green here right it only needs to show red when it hits that height of the red so to speak so what we want to do is basically add a uv map tool so uv map and uh, let's work on that one first let's display that here and let's change the parameters so first of all change the orientation to X and then we need to really play a bit with the values All right so um, right, you can change this here the size but also the center All right to maybe something like this but maybe actually this is looking pretty good so if we play it now Yeah, that looks pretty good. By the way, I don't really like that green here. It needs to be a bit brighter. So let's go back to the green and really make it a bit more luminous. Yeah, looking a, a, a bit better. Uh, we need to fit fix it for the other ones as well, of course. So what I do here is basically copy this over. So copy and paste. So Ctrl V you can do as well, and then just hold Shift and drag it in between here until the colors change. There you go, that's that one fixed. Ctrl V, paste it again, put it in between there. Oh, that didn't quite work. Between there, uh, Ctrl V, between there. And by the way, I do deselect it after I do it, because if I would have to select it and then do Ctrl V. It will append it to the last selected node, and I don't want that. All right, so I normally then first un oh, still it. Uh, unselect it. So Ctrl V again, and then pop it in between here. And now we're done. Right. Uh, I can see now that it doesn't hit the red often enough. I like seeing the red a bit more. So um, I probably didn't do this quite right. right? Maybe the um, center needs to go down a bit. Maybe something like this. And then we'll just copy over the value. And maybe the size like this. Yeah, this is looking a bit better. So something like six and three. Um, by the way, I could have just pasted an instance of this as well. Let's actually quickly show that. So let's delete these others. And now just copy, Control C. And then instead of Control V for paste, we do Control Shift V, paste instance. Right. Here we all link it to the original one. So if we change it again in the original, it will change in the instance as well. So, and again, Control Shift V, popped in between there, Control Shift V, there, no, sorry. and that one in between there. So now we're there again. And if we now change something here, say to 
the size here and uh, move it down again it will change it for all of them uh, this is more like the original example uh, so this is looking pretty good I'm, I'm quite happy with this so the next stuff is all pretty straightforward right so let's add another merge node and right so let's add a camera pipe it in here right and uh oops let's view it from the camera's perspective and of course this is not quite what we want so let's go back to the normal perspective find something we like for now and then copy that over to the camera there we go and now we can view it from the camera's perspective brilliant uh, however what i want to do is i want the camera to rotate around this right? so uh, a neat little trick is to add a transform tool in between transform 3d right now everything uh, of the camera will be governed by the transform tool so what i can actually do is change the rotation here right? this rotation but I don't want that. I want to have the Y rotation and look what happens here. It starts rotating, rotating around that fixed point and that's exactly what we wanted. So now you can animate this over time. So find a the initial frame, say, okay, this is what we like. So uh, animate the rotate group and go a bit further into time and go around a few times and I'll play it. There we go. Bob's your proverbial uncle. Next one up. Let's add a floor. So that will be a shape 3D. Pop that in here. Uh, rotate it around. Minus 90. Oh, there we go. Uh, there seems to be a bit of a delay sometimes on my computer right now whenever I do something. Um, in any case, let's scale it up a bit. And that looks, uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, let's leave that for now. And let's add a couple of lights in. First of all, let's add an ambient light in and pipe it in here and then dial it down and then I always like having a bit of a point light well not always but I do like my point lights add it in here as well move it up a bit maybe to the front change the intensity maybe something like this oh we're getting there uh, next one up, the text. So uh, text 3D. Again, we pipe it into the merge. And uh, we need to provide some text. So we set um, equalizer. I do it in all capitals. Oops. Equalizer. Uh, the font I used uh, was actually Bauhaus, which, funnily enough, is a bit of a Bauhaus type font, uh, position it here, up a bit, and actually let's change the perspective view so that we can play around a bit, right, and uh, let's add a bit of extrusion, not too much, but this is good, and um, a bit of bevel, Yeah, this looks uh, pretty good. Right, so that's great. Uh, let's have a quick play. Of course, you don't see it move now uh, because I changed the perspective to, or changed the perspective view, not to the camera view. So if we now, again, change the camera view. There we go. Looking pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Um, okay, next one up, and we're nearly there really, um, is uh, get a renderer in. All right, and display it here. 
uh, we'll change it to OpenGL, enable lighting, well, shadows I don't really need. So actually, I'll leave that off for now. Um, and now we need to do the whole ambient occlusion thing. And again, as I said at the start, uh, this is probably not the formal way of doing things. And it may not be entirely correct, but it yields a result I like. And therefore, I'm going to tell you about it. Right, so uh, we'll have one path that will um, go into a channel boolean that is the straight renderer. And then one that will be going via the ambient occlusion. So here we go. The SSAO node. So let's feed it here. Or let's deal with it here and let's show it here. So, right. So you can't see anything right now because certain things in the output of the renderer will need to be set. Right. So you need to ensure that the Z or Z is selected and that the uh, normal is selected. Secondly, you need to ensure that there's a feed of the camera and we want to ensure that it's not just a camera, but the camera transformed. So we need to pipe it from after the transform tool, pipe it into the ambient occlusion and bang, there you go. Is the, this is the ambient occlusion pass. And of course you can then change the parameters. Right? I won't go through all the details, but uh, I think for now, just play with it and see what you like, right? So you can see here, can change the look quite dramatically. Uh, but really to assess it properly, we need to combine these two by adding a channel boolean. Let's do that here. And feed this in here. And this. Let's show it here. Oh, and it's the wrong channel boolean. Sorry, so I meant to add channel boolean this one. So let's do it again. Add this one in and this one. And let's show it. So obviously this is not the correct mode. So let's uh, fix that here and uh, change it to multiply. And there we go. And this is probably already good enough for me right now. But let's see if we can Change it a bit more. No, that's a bit too much. Maybe something like this. Uh, and that's looking pretty good, right? And let's do one last thing and, and let's add a background. So let's add it here and pipe this in there. And let's show that. Right now it's a black background, but let's uh, change it. Right, let's change it into a uh, gradient again. And let's add maybe a uh, nice blue. All right, so this could already work. Of course, we can change the angle and such, maybe something like this. Uh, yeah, I think this is looking good. Right. Uh, this is, by the way, I don't think it's quite wide enough. Uh, so I do want to go back and maybe intensify the ambient light. Right. And that is actually looking good. Right. Maybe the camera is a bit too close by or these bars go up a bit too high because they get out, go out of the frame. So we can, of course, remedy that. Uh, let's actually take the camera itself. Oops. And do it like this. Let's play it again. All right, that's looking pretty good. Maybe they're still going a bit high, but I think you uh, you understand what I'm after here and you can change it to your heart's content. Uh, so the final thing we would need to do is add a saver node. And uh, then one important thing within the saver node, uh, we give it a name. Uh, let's give it um, equalizer tutorial.mov. 
Uh, and then, as said before, we need to ensure that the audio is there. Of course, throughout the tutorial, you haven't really heard the audio, but as we said before, you can always enable it, but it needs to be here in the saver. So, but definitely for the final result, if you want the audio to be part of that, you need to select it. So I've got this file here, beat full. Let's add it in. Uh, let's choose a start and an end frame. Uh, when did it stop rotating? I'll say something like this. Let's do 180. So let's set the end, end frame to 180. Let's render it out and we'll be right back. Okay, we're done. So let's have a look at the final result. So that is looking pretty good. Uh, of course, it's not a whole loop and everything, and you, know, you can tweak it a lot more. Uh, and as said before, this bar is going a bit too high and all of that. But I think the principle should be pretty clear to all of you. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's that for this tutorial. And I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you guys next time. And if you like it, please like it. If you want to share it, by all means, do share it. And see you guys next time. Cheers. Bye.